This week we've been learning our um, dictate direct quotations and sentences. So remember, a direct quotation is a sentence that has the act that contains the actual words that a person is speaking. So the words that they are saying will be included inside of that sentence. It's called a direct quotation. Yesterday we reviewed, remember guys, when whatever they're saying, you put what on what they're saying. What is it called that you put on what they are actually saying? It's called what? What are those marks called? Quotation. Yes, quotation marks on what they're saying. You put quotation marks on the actual words that the person is saying, okay? Okay, so the actual words that they're saying, you will put quotation marks on their words. So let's look at number one. Can you give me a dollar at Dave? And so guys, what is Dave actually saying? Can you give me a dollar? That's the quotation. Number two, Greg said, let's fly our kites. What did, what did he say? Bye. That's where your quotations will go. Jan, number three, Jandy Gale, watch out. Where did the quotations go? Watch out. watch out and listen to it, guys. If she's yelling, you should know how to end that type of sentence. And then number four, my dog likes to play, said William. What did he say? Okay, so just remember... We, it's good to know where to put the quotations, but also remember what, how to capitalize, when to put your commas, when to put periods, question marks, whatever it is that you need to put as well, okay? All right, guys, these are your four sentences. You can begin, and then we'll go over it together, okay? Y'all got it online? Yes? Let's go ahead and go over them. It's okay if you're not done. Just try to fix it as I go through it. All right, so number one, can you give me a dollar? Ask Dave. Okay, Naraya, how would I write this correct? Okay, capitalize my C and can, of course, first letter. Quotations. Okay, quotations go where? At the front of can and the end of dollar. That's what she said. That's what he said. Good. Question mark goes at the end inside. See that? Capitalize my D and Dave here and finish with the Okay, that's all what you should have done. If you did not, then this is your chance to fix it. Okay? That was all of the corrections. Good job. Number two, Greg said, let's fly our kite. Okay? Yep, I did my first letter G, Greg. Good, comma. Remember, guys, if who is speaking comes first, put a comma. Comma. Capitalize first letter L and let's. Quotation on let's, and it ends where? Okay. Period inside. And remember, your punctuation goes inside the quotation, not outside. Good, so this was it. Guys, again, online, if you did not write it correctly or if you want to make sure, this is your time to fix it. Number three, Janet Yale, watch out. How would we write this one the correct way? Janet Yale. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Okay. Couple last first letter, J and Janet. Quotations on watch and out. Quotations on watch and out. Exclamation mark because that's so she's shouting, so that's exclamation. Comma, one more thing. Capitalize the W and watch. Good. Okay, seems like we're well. I'm not, uh, in person, I don't know what that's going on. Number four, my dog likes to play, said William. Right? Capitalize first letter M. And Quotation on my and finish it where? Play. On play. And um, Kevin William. Harry, what's my punctuation here? Punctuation. Oh. Harry, uh, my dog likes to play. Yeah. Oh. All right, guys, so that's how we do it. So it seems like we're getting it. Tomorrow's our last day to practice before the test on Thursday. Okay? 
So again, guys, if you, if you have anything that you did incorrectly, this was your time to fix it and look at how we fixed it, how we wrote it, how we uh, corrected it so that you're prepared for the test on Thursday. All right, go ahead and get out your letters book. We're on page 63 today. Page 63 in your letters book. So page 63, guys, you can be, I'm sorry. Yeah, 63, you can begin working on the letters. Take your time. Practice well. This is our last week. Remember doing our books together. You'll be responsible on your own after this because you will. I heard you the first five times you said that. Okay, you can begin. Your reading books. We're going to read it. Okay. So reading page nine. Yesterday we read our first story in our new books, Across the Meadow. Across the Angus. We read about Angus. How he was curious. And he finally met the duck. And he was scared afterwards. So page nine, rabbit. Okay, that's good, y'all. They probably will be, though, but they could not yet. They probably will be. Probably be like at the next few days. All right, are we on page nine? Yep. All right, then if you can start us off, Rabbits by Nancy Bird Turner. I left my book at my dad's house. Okay. Rabbits are dressed in belt coats and quiet, in quiet belt shoes and just as fast as when they run as often as they choose. A sitting rabbit by a bush feels raining a book upon his nose and suddenly decides to go and up away he goes across a field down a hill and through green meadow ground. It must be fun to run, 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 and never make it. Okay, good. So it's just a poem of our rabbits. Yeah. All right, page 10, let's go to our next story, A Trip to God's House. We should learn in this Bible soon. Okay, A Trip to God's House. All right, Avaya, page 10.
Jesus had, was 12 years old now, and he was going on a special trip with Mary, Joseph, and the rest of the family. He was traveling nearly 80 miles to visit God's house in Jerusalem. Each day, Jesus and his family walked and talked with their friends. Each night, they sat around campfire and slept under the, the stars. When the people came to Jerusalem, they went to God's house to worship. Jesus went too. He liked to visit God's house. He liked to hear the teachers talk about God. At last, it was time for the people to go home. Mary, Joseph left. Mary and Joseph left Jerusalem with their friends. They started on the long trip back home. Where is Jesus? Mary asked Joseph as they walked along. I thought he was with some friends, Joseph answered. Mary and Joseph looked everywhere, but Jesus was not with any of their friends. Quickly, they turned back toward Jerusalem to look for Jesus. For three days, Mary and Joseph searched. Okay. All right. So this is the, the story we, we have covered this in Bible before where we discussed how they went to Jerusalem for the pat for Passover and Jesus was with them and they kind of separated. Jesus went to the temple, Mary and Joseph, you know, did whatever they did. So when it was time to leave Jerusalem, they ended up realizing that Jesus was missing. He had stayed behind. Okay. So page 12. I know. Can lay page 12. Have you seen a 12 year old boy? Jesus, they asked. Mm -hmm. Everyone they met, but no one had seen him at night. They went to the temple. There they saw Jesus talking with the teachers in God's house. The teachers were amazed to hear how much Jesus knew about God. We have to worry about you. Mary told Jesus. Mary told Jesus, but Jesus answered, Didn't you know I would be here doing my father business? Father business? After Jesus said goodbye to the teacher, he went back to Nazareth in the um Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they went and looked all over for him, and finally they found him. And where was he? He was in the temple, and he told Mary, he says, Mother, wouldn't I be in my father's house? There's nowhere else for me to be but in here. And so quickly she realized, of course, that's where he's going to be. 13, say. No, no, no. Joseph and Mary each year, Jesus not only grew taller and stronger, but he also grew wiser and closer. To the those around him, it seems God very much to watch Jesus grow, growing up to every when he met and bringing glory to his heavenly bond. Alright, please stop. Thank you.
Okay, and so of course, that's where Jesus was watching me, and that's what he was telling me about the parents. I will always be in my father's house. There's nowhere else for him to be, but in his father's house. And so um, they, you know, they, re they realized that after, okay? His purpose was to bring glory to his father, and so he would be in his father's house. All right, 14, let's read the next poem, The Boy and the Wind. Mariah, 14. The boy and the wind. A boy one day went out to play. Clash with the breeze, spring weather, the wind, and he, right merrily, he did often play together. He made a kite, both, both strong and light. By stone and painting, shine the wind through. He will playful, will playful be and help me in its flying. Okay. In 15, Mariah, read the next The boy and the wind came past, the boy and ran fast. The kite rose high and higher. Our pool, the kite, all oh, splendid. Yeah. It was a noble climber. She made a boat to step afloat upon a brooklet, throwing the March winds. Blew the meadow through and kept the sailboat going. So they had day in merry and merry play. The boy and went together, then sent a probe the kite and boat out in the wild night nice weather. Good. All right, so yeah, so that's just a poem about the boy and the wind and him flying his kite. Okay, good. So that's it for reading. Okay, our pages today in reading. Go ahead and get out your phonics and language. We'll be on page 203 for our dictation. Phonics and language, page 203. Phonics and language, page 203. Flugence, Miss Flugence, mm -hmm. twenty four infant. Miss Flugence, All right, so we should already be on page 203. Let's go ahead and begin. You'll write the whole word. First word is tickle. Tickle, like if someone is tickling you, like tickle.
Move that tissue. Why would you put it in front of you? Oh, my camera is so off. Why is it off? <laughs> it never should be off. Okay, T I C K L E. Tickle. Next one, tickled. Tickled. With a suffix. Tickled. I Okay, tickled, Carson. How do we spell tickled? T I C K L E D. Next one, tickling. Tickling. Everything is tickling. Tickling. Hmm. No, Ryan. Okay, tickling, uh, Kenley. 
C I C K L I N G. Tickling. Good. All right. Let's do our dictation sentence. So you fill in what's missing. My favorite breakfast is scrambled eggs. My favorite breakfast is scrambled eggs. My favorite breakfast is scrambled eggs. Okay, so guys, what, what words did we have to fill in? Just tell me. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and look at the board. So guys, if you remember yesterday, we discussed proper usage of certain words. We did uh, may and can and teach and learn. So anybody can tell me what does it mean when we use may? What In what context what we use may? Does anyone remember from yesterday? Okay, when do we use may? To ask permission. When do we use can? To do what? Dennis? When we use can, it's for what reason? To show that we have power. Yes, to show that we have the ability or power to do something. Good. So let's do some examples using may and can, okay? So mom said that I may or can go to your house tomorrow. Which one would it be? Mom said that I may or can go to your house tomorrow. Because you see, she's doing something. You're going to have to sit up and stop, okay? You're going to have to pick with her. All day long. Okay, Carson? May. Mom said that I may go to your house tomorrow. And that's because mom is giving permission. Next one. After, <clears throat> after he looked at my bike, Uncle Jim said he cannot or he may not fix it. After looking at my bike, Uncle Jim said he cannot or may not fix it. Okay. Cannot is showing that he does not have the ability to do so. I cannot or may not go outside right now. I cannot or may not go outside right now. Hmm. May not, that's because I don't have permission. Okay. Our God can or may supply all of our needs. Our God can or may supply all of our needs. Can supply because he has the ability to do so. Good. We also learned the proper usage of teach and learn, right? What does it mean to teach? To teach. To give information. What does it mean to learn? To, to receive the information, yes. So when you give, I'm sorry. When you teach, you're giving out information. When you learn, you're receiving information. Okay, good. So Abby can learn or teach more about science. Abby can learn or teach more about science. Learn. She needs to receive the information. Okay. I enjoy learning or teaching from mom about cooking. 
I enjoy learning or teaching from mom about cooking. Learning. I enjoy learning from mom about cooking. Did Jeffrey teach or learn you to swim? Did Jeffrey teach or learn you to swim, Dennis? Learn. I mean, teach. Yeah, teach. Did Jeffrey teach you to swim? Good. Awesome. All right, so we're going to learn two new words, two sets of words of their proper usage, okay? So we have lie and lay. Not lie like you're not telling the truth. This is the other lie. So this lie right here means to rest. Okay, to rest. L-I-E, lie, means to rest. Then we have lay. This means to place something down. Lie means to rest. Lay means to place something down. So for example, I will lie or lay down for a nap. Which one would it be? I will lie or lay down lie. for a nap. Lie, because we're going to rest. So I will lie down for a nap. Next one, Mary will lie or lay her clothes down. Mary will lie or lay her clothes down. Lay, she will lay, because she's going to place them down. She will lay her clothes down, okay? Same thing with sit and set. They're very similar to lie and lay. Sit means to rest. And set means to place something down. Yeah, that's what I just said. Lie, sit, I mean, sit means to rest and set means to place something down. So the boys will sit or set still. Which one would it be? They will sit still because they need to rest. Sit still. Please sit or set the papers on the desk. Please sit or set the papers on the desk. Set. Good. Thank you, Dennis. Set the papers on the desk. Okay? So, guys, so lie, lay, sit, and set are very similar to one another. It's just how you use it in a sentence. Well, that's how you have to make sure to use it properly in a sentence. Lie and sit means to rest, and lay and set means to place something down. Okay? And you also practice this inside of your book as well. All right, let's go ahead and diagram these two sentences here. I have Ethan called his friend. Where am I going to divide my sentence? Ethan called his friend. And between Ethan and called, what's the subject? What's my verb? So how I diagram? Ethan and called. Remember, diagramming the sentence is when we take the subject and the verb. It's whenever we highlight the subject and verb. That's diagramming. Next one, and ego flew high. Where would I divide? Ego and flu was the subject, and what's the verb? Okay, high diagram. And ego and flu. Good. All right, last thing. So we're going to put either G E or D G E. So we have fudge. Which one would be the correct one to finish? Fudge. Kelly? D G E, fudge. Next, cage. Cage, which one would be the correct one to finish cage, Noraya? G-E. Backstage, which one would finish backstage? G-E. And then pages, which one would be the one to finish pages? Mm. G-E, pages. Awesome. All right. Good. Alana, are you guys here? Well, this is, but I'm just making sure everybody else is here and present. Yeah? Okay. All right. So that's it for our morning soon. We covered our writing, phonics, language. When we come back later, we'll get into our science and social studies and our um, math. Okay? Have a good break. Bye.